Hello and welcome to today's League of Legends roundup for July 11th, where we cover the two series in the LPL, the news of the day, the sneak peek, the whole nine yards. Um, if you didn't watch my videos the last couple days, I have changed the way I'm doing things. The roundup is now this, um, and there are different videos throughout the week. I went over that yesterday in my future of the channel part two. If you missed it and you want to know how this channel is going to go going forward, you should watch that. Um, as well as in the comments, I mean, in the description of that video and will be in the description of videos going forward as the discord link. I have the discord made, um, come join in. I will say that this is not something I am. I'm not discord savvy. So this is going to be a bumpy road. Um, I did make a voice channel today. Yesterday I said I might not. And, um, Somebody suggested they wanted one, so I did. If you guys want to do watch parties or whatever, this, I think, Protex was the individual who made a request. So, um, if you guys want to do that, um, obviously read the rules, follow the rules. Um, so, news of the day first. Yesterday, Nongshim signed Snowflower, so we went over that, um, and it definitely was a weird move. Now... Um, they brought up Sylvie in the jungle as well uh, today or yesterday. Sylvie, 427 uh, KDA, 6 CS per minute, 67 KP, 26 kill share, nearly 19 gold share, and 5 champions of 15 games in the uh, Challenger Series of the LCK. Now, 6 is good. 67.7 um, is good when you have 6 CS per minute. I mean, the guy's obviously farming pretty well, getting ahead in his matchup. Um, so he's not creating as much, and he is getting a good amount of kills, while well, actually secondary carry type numbers of kills, to be honest with you. Um, Dread, not quite holding up the way he did in spring. 3 KDA, 5.27 CS per minute is not good enough. Anything below 5.5, 5.5 is the middle ground. You need to be above 70% KP to even be, you know farming that low and he's only at 68 percent so he's getting behind his matchups he's not creating um 22 kill share 18 gold share he is not what he was in spring so they're going to bring up sylvie and we'll see how that goes nongshim i think is two and six so they need all the help they can get hle another lck team in the basement are recalling choni um choni played a little bit last split um now in academy he had a 385 and 819 CS per minute. CS per minute is definitely clouded by two Senna games. 73 KP, 31 kill share. So he does get a good amount of kills. Um, you know, I'm sure it's being spread around a bit. I didn't look at the other HLE members to know how much mid lane may be getting of that kill share. But 72.5 KP is very high, even for an AD carry. Explains why his CS per minute is so low, in addition to just two Senna games should not hurt you that bad. But, um, you know, eight champions of 13 games, so he plays a lot of different things, which is good. Samdi gets dropped down, um, had a KDA below 1.8, CS per minute. Did have three Senna games, though, so more Senna games. And even in less, um, you know, le uh, just forget it. Um, 63 um, KP, 23 kill share. 23 kill share is awful. That is awful for an AD carry. He's not carrying them at all. That is why they are like 1-7. and seven. Um, A move had to be made after yesterday, and they've made it. Um, he played 9 champions in 21 games, so he played a lot of different things. But, when I mean, I've said before, and if you've stuck around, around with me for a while, um, you know, when people play a lot of different champions, I like that. That gives options. You want options in draft. But at the same time, you need to have a foundation of picks that you can go back on that are not going to get blown up and it seems like Samdi is just um on struggle street obviously watching him play he was on struggle street but he's been dropped down now blg making another move they had brought up can this past week in place of Weiwei, and now they have recalled rise and the 80 carry slot he had over 10 cs per minute 67 kp 29 kill share 25 gold share, nearly 10 KDA in the LDL. The BLG squad, I believe, won in spring and are dominant once again. So this is 
no surprise that his numbers are great. We will see how he does in the LPL against better players and with what would be a worse team at this level. Doggo, um, I think Doggo is solid. I really do. I don't think he is actually the problem. Um, I, I am going to keep saying it. I believe it is mid lane that is the problem. There's a reason why they tried to address it, and I don't think Icon was really all that much of an upgrade over Fofo. But uh, 955 CS per minute, 38 KDA, 68 uh, KP, 29 kill share, and 24 gold share, 9 champions of 22 games. So he didn't get as much gold um, as what you would expect. You usually want it to be higher than 24%. Um, but I mean, I don't blame, I mean, really, honestly, I don't think it's Doggo's fault. I really don't. And if Doggo's going to be in the LDL, if I'm him, I'm going to the PCS next uh, split because there's no point in, um, you know, playing in the LDL if you're him, um, especially with BLG on, I mean, not doing that well to begin with. So, I mean, we'll see if this turns around BLG split, but I don't think it will. Um, now with the LPL, we had two series, FPX and LNG. Um, LNG 16th in my power rankings, coming in at five and three, FPX three and five, FPX would two O them as you see here. LWX going 12, two and nine in the two game series. 41% of his team's kills, excuse me, ends up being a star of the day. Summit, 4, 2, and 11 in top lane, had the most damage per minute of anybody in this series. Um, very close between him and 369 for star of the day. Light was LNG's best player going 6, 5, and 5. Um, LNG making a lot of questionable decisions in draft and um, itemization. And just decision making. Like, honestly, I mean... Pulling out the Gragas once was like, okay, well, you pulled out the Gragas, you got them. They didn't expect the Gragas, but stop picking it. Pick something else or build it differently because, like, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. LNG makes no sense right now as they continue to fall down the standings. Um, second series, JDG and Rare Adam. JDG, despite this going three games, JDG really had Rare Adam's number. Um JDG were third in my power rankings. Uh, 369 went 11, 6, and 24, dealing the most damage on his team with 28% of the share. Ends up being star of the day. Kanavi, 21, 8, and 30 in the jungle. I believe his Viego had double digit kills in game three. I could be wrong, um, but if I recall correctly, I think he did. So, um, star of the day for Kanavi, which is no surprise. Um, Khalid, I think, only had two kills between his two games. Obviously, he impacted the game a lot more than that. Um, but um, I think his KP was extremely high, if I recall. I think it was because in the second game, I think he had almost, I think he had 100% KP against LNG in game two on the Wukong. But um, Tarzan struggled and Leanne also definitely struggled. I mean, Rare Adam's whole team um, outside of iBoy struggled. iBoy, 16, 9, and 19. 33% of this team's damage share and had more damage per minute than anybody in this series. And I believe more damage per minute than anybody on the day. Um, his Abelios in game two was the only reason Rare Adam had a chance in hell. I think he had maybe 10 kills in game two. Um, you know, it was tough between him and LWX for a star of the day, but I felt like I was kind of screwing over FPX if I only put Hung down there, because, I mean, Hung did very well in two games, only died, I think, five times or four times, where Missing in the three-game series died, like, 13 times, because he picked a Moo one game, and a Moo Moo, in my opinion, is a bait. Um, I mean, he played well, I mean, he won on it, because he's aggressive, but I think for most players, it's a bait, like, Yu Yanja in game one could not pilot the champion worth a crap, because he's not, um, he's not super good, so... That's it for uh, this part of the roundup. Now onto the sneak peek. Okay, now for the two series that are going to take place tomorrow in the LPL. Um, RNG versus Team Wii and OMG versus Top. RNG, fifth in my power rankings, coming in at 4-2. and two. Team Wii, 0-6. RNG lost to Top, who's listed below 2-1. to one. Team Wii lost to OMG, 2-1, as listed below. Week 8, Day 7 was the last time they played, where Team Wii would upset RNG 2-0. It would be the last um, loss by RNG until Summer Split. After that, they would make a run and not lose a single series um, throughout MSI and etc. 
Um, Zing went 15-1-9 and nine in that series. I looked at LPL Fan Club like 20 minutes ago, and they had not listed what Team Wee's lineup was going to be. And therefore, I'm going with Zing versus Gala because I don't know if it's going to be SMLZ or Zing. Either way, that's a matchup I would look at because evidently um, it was the bot lane that made things happen for Team Wee. I, I do think Breathe versus Bu might be kind of... Well, it won't be close. I think Breathe's a lot better than Bu Bu. But Bu Bu played pretty decent in the last series against OMG. They had to really camp his lane to get him out of the series. So, as far as I'm concerned, that might be interesting. But uh, jungle-wise, I think Wei has Bashang beat by a mile. And I think Ming is going to just... I mean, Ming and Jahu are so much better than um, Heal, Kadaya, and... Um, Shanks or Shie. Does it make a difference? I think RNG have this. Then again, they upset him last time. OMG in top. OMG 4-4. Four and four, Riding a hot streak. Top 7-1. and one. We just went over their last games because they played these two and beat them. Um, week 3, day 4. OMG upset top. This is when OMG was good. Um, OMG had not been good again until recently where they started winning games again. But in the window of like week I would say, arguably, that could have been their last win. I'm not I'm even sure, but it's possible. Um, so, let's say week three, day four in spring, to literally week five in summer, OMG, like, just were awful. Like, one of the worst teams in the LPL. Um, but, now they're four and four, top seven and one. Like I said, OMG went 2-0 the last time they played. Able, 16-1-23 and in that series. Um, Knight and um, Knight got gapped by Cream in mid as well in that series, which is crazy to say, but Cream really took advantage of him stat wise. At least I can't recall exactly how the matchup went. I can just look at how the stats look, and they looked gruesome. So um, we'll see how that goes going forward because I really do think uh, Jackie Love has able beat in bot lane. Um, OMG going back and forth between their supports, Cold and. Um, What's his, oh god, 0909 is mid. Who is the support? Oh, jeez. Jerry? Maybe? Uh, maybe? I'm not sure. I don't think, I think they've went back with cold and they haven't really swapped out since. So we're going to say that they're going to go with cold anyways. But I don't think top um, really should struggle with OMG. But like I said with RNG, they were upset last time. So... Who knows if they're going to come in and ensure that that doesn't happen again, or are they going to take the team lightly? Um, OMG winning as much as they are, I would say the top should definitely take OMG seriously. Um, I mean, we'll see how it goes. Predict in the uh, comments if you want to, but I do have a thread for every day um, going on in the Discord where you can put the predictions there, join the Discord, do whatever you want to do. Um, and uh yeah there's a predictions channel and that's where you can hit the thread and make your prediction so i have one place to look at if you so choose thank you for watching and i hope you come back for more content oh and later today i will have my um best performers of the week in the lpl and lck video um, because that is what mondays are for